I'm mischievous? Who wrote that? Okay, so, HDR photography, who knows what it is? High depth resolution. Uh, it's not high depth. High dynamic range, isn't that it? High dynamic range. Yeah, my fault. I was thinking of something else. It's huh? my fault. Focus in depth. That's how Focus in depth. Kind of. Something it has to do with. Like, what? what it says on the board. Yes. That's my tips for later. So, for instance, let's look at this picture, right? This is a normal exposure. So, this person who took this photo um, did a light metering on these rocks, right? That's why you have the details in the rocks and all this is good, right? So it's not a bad photo, correct? Mm -hmm. But what do we notice about it? It's, it's really bright. bright. It's very bright. The clouds are not as bright. How about one in the top? <laughs> yes. The clouds aren't as like defined as you can be Exactly. They they're, have they're not very detailed. Some but they're not. Really right. Over here, over here, it's blown out, right? You have no details here whatsoever. Yeah. Pretty much all you can see is the whiteboard. Um, so HDR, high dynamic range, right? It deals with tonal range. Um, our eyes, God made us to where we can see vivid details in everything, right? Like we can see shadows, we can see really bright details on um, your mid-tonal ranges. Cameras cannot do that. Um, even your nicest cameras really can't. Um, I was telling um, you yesterday, do what? I have a question. Yes. Do you mean range like color, like darks and lights? Or like shadows, like mid-tones, highlights, right? Okay. So a lot of times like if you focus here, this is what the camera is leading or reading that needs detail. So either if you had shadows in here, they would either be really dark or really bright in this case. Um, when it focuses on this and it lightens the camera to get details here, it lightens this as well. Therefore, it lost the details because it was already so bright. Um, if they had focused on something, say there was a shadow right here, something darker here than the rock, and they focused here, then you would have had really dark rocks. So the shadows would be even darker, you wouldn't have the detail if you have an underexposed photo. Um, so with uh, HDR photography, what it does is you're essentially going to be taking three pictures. Um, you know how you have your light meter on your camera. Um, what, what you do for an HDR photo is, is you're going to take a picture where it's light reading low. You know how you have the, the minus two, the zero, the plus two. So minus two is underexposed. You'd want it to be there and snap a photo. It's going to be really dark, not a great photo. Then you're going to take a normal picture. Um, where it's reading the correct exposure. You take that, it's decent. Then you're going to take one where it's at the plus two, it's going to be overexposed, really bright. Um, or, uh, Photoshop has this really great thing now where uh, you can upload the three photos at once to it and it will um, merge them for you so you can see all three layers and then it's going to give you your little tweaks so you can do your gamma, your exposure, uh, your details, so on and so forth. We're seeing that later when we uh, try to do the lab. But, uh, it lets you um, tweak them and get that really nice contrasting photo, right? We've talked about contrast before. It's really good for a photo um, for it to be really sharp, detailed contrast. So that's what um, Photoshop will do for you with a new program. Um, this will be the assignment we'll get to in a minute. I'm going to show you some examples with this. Um, I also have a video for you guys to watch really quick. But, um, so like we've seen, well, let's go with this first. This is going to show you the three different types of photos you would take. Um, so you have your overexposed on your far right, um, your regular photo on the middle, uh, and then on the left, your, your um, underexposed, right? It's too dark. So um, if we were to do this with HDR, you just merge them. Anyway, that's that. Um, but like, look at the, these photos. These are some HDR photos. Let me turn the light on so you can actually see them a little better. So, See how vibrant that is? And you can almost even see the details in the grass. Like you can see the different little patches here, even though it's really far back. Um, and the sky, even, you can see where the sunset is happening versus where it's night. It's very detailed. Um, if you were to just try and take a picture um, that doesn't have uh, HDR, if the camera doesn't have HDR, and you try to take that picture, you would lose detail somewhere in that because the camera just can't compensate for all that color. Um, so, um, something that I really like. Wait, that's a real picture. Is that really? That's a real picture. I thought that was a painting. Like, that looks part of the world. beautiful. That is so cool. Yeah. Here's one I thought Cassie would appreciate with the force. Um, where you can see the detail in the sky, so that there's enough detail in the horse after moving the photos together. Still, a lot of times you do have the silhouette of the horse, um, or the sky would be very well not because it's picking up the um, tonal range of the horse. 
And then this one's probably my favorite. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, with this ring. See how you have this is just the sky so you can kind of see the oranges and the blues. Um, but you're seeing the sun's rays coming through. I guess that is that bamboo. Um, yeah, that looks like it. Yeah. yeah, like you can see where it's actually coming through it. Um, very, very detailed, very, very vibrant. That's the point of HDR. It's supposed to look lifelike. Um, sometimes it's almost too surreal, but really cool effects nonetheless. Okay, so let's let's watch this video really quick. You can kind of get this guy talking. It's only going to be about three minutes or so. Um, with color and contrast. Ever wonder how they pull it off? Are they magic photographers? Actually, it's kind of a gateway thing in digital photography expertise. It's called high dynamic range imaging. And it's actually pretty easy. No arcane photo magic, just a little bit of time. It's pretty straightforward. And Mr. Roger Chang is joining us to give us the lowdown of HDR. Yes, HDR, high dynamic range uh, imaging. Uh, but what that basically means is that uh, devices like uh, cameras, even digital cameras, computer screens, HDTVs, they have a much uh, shorter uh, range that they can display versus the human eye. What you can see, and that's why people always talk about it's so lifelike, it's you know brilliant, right. it's it's talking about all these things because these devices are are poor in quality to what we can actually see with our own. So what I'm, let's say I'm, I'm looking at a sunset over Bakersfield, and there's this big brand of orange orb in the distance, and there's like a junkyard with a bunch of old trucks in it. And if I take a picture so that the sun's not ex overexposing the top half of the picture, then all the junkyard's lost in yeah. dark. Mm -hmm. And if I can see the detail in the junkyard, then the sun has exploded into this giant sheet. Exactly. Of light. Exactly. You're means. basically compensating for the fact that if you choose something bright, all the dark detail gets lost. If you shoot something dark, you're going to start losing a lot of the hot, uh, bright highlights. Uh, typically, photographers normally use things like flash uh, flash photography to kind of fill in that light. But for most people, you know, you don't either have that or it takes it's too right. it takes too long to set up. Or if it's a you know if it's a, if it's an actual sort of scene of a building or or you know a sunset, it's kind of hard to have a big enough fill flash. To yeah, and and uh, in HDR is a new it's something that came out around the turn of the 20th century. And essentially, the idea is, well, I can't get everything in one shot, so why not I, why not do multiple shots of the same scene at different exposures? So I can take one at a really bright, a bright exposure, one at not so bright, one at a medium, one at a medium dark, and one at a really dark. The great thing is, most digital cameras today, within the past uh, past two years, have a function what they call uh, um, auto uh, auto exposure bracketing, and where they basically give you the ability within the camera to set uh, three exposures uh, in one, not one shot, but in, in quick succession. Quick succession. So, say I set this up and I can broaden out the two stops up, two stops down. So see I the press the here. button once, it takes it normal. Press it again, it takes it at a lower than normal. Press it one more time, it takes it at really high. Okay, so I've got my oh, three wow. images. I've gotten them onto my notebook. I've I've got two stops up, two stops down, or whatever the bracketed range are. How do we turn those into our high dynamic range image? So what we're essentially doing is compositing all three of those images on top of each other in order to bring out those qualities that we want from each one. So, so it's kind of like layers. Yeah, masking, masking selective masking, and, and bring out the layers, uh, the elements of those layers that we want. Is there is this like a painful afternoon in Photoshop, or is there a secret shortcut? In Photoshop, there is a secret shortcut. You can actually do HDR um, within it, and it'll do it for you. Um, you can try it with GIMP, but you can only... Okay, and we're going to do the Photoshop here later, either today or tomorrow, depending on how much time we have, because um, it's a short day. But, um, so anyways, that's that. Does that make sense to you guys what it's doing? Um, the camera can only do so much compared to what our eye can do. So, um, taking multiple photos is the way they compensate for that. And what I was going to say earlier, Tanya, that's what I was telling you yesterday, Angel Adams, um, a lot of his photos, that's kind of what he would do to get the details in the sky versus, you know, the rocks and all of that. Um, he also would do all day exposures as well, which that would not be fun. But um, so, anywho, I have an example for you guys. I'm just gonna light back on really quick um, that I did earlier today, just to show that it's pretty possible to do it here. Obviously, 
it's not very vibrant right now with it being almost winter. It's really cold outside, so I don't think we're going to go outside to do these photos. We'll probably stick to them inside. Um, but I went into the chapel to kind of show you what I did to take these photos. Um, so this is my um, overexposed photo, right? Um, you can see that you kind of lose a lot of detail here where the light's hitting. Um, but you can see the carpet, the details in the carpet, some of the shadows a little bit. Um, this is the middle photo where um, the camera's focusing in this area on the cross. So um, the crucifix is pretty in focus. Some of this wood's not too bad, um, but it gets really dark in here, right, where there's no light. And then obviously this is our um, underexposed photo. But the plus to this would then be, now you have the details of this cross here in this lower spot, and you can even see some of the tile work in there. So after taking it into Photoshop, um, this was what all three did. Um, now you can see the details of where the light's hitting up here. Um, you can still see all the detail here, and just the different tones of the light hitting here. Um, you still see the carpet here with the shadows. So, and then also, um, you still have the detail of the window pretty nice too. It's not blown out or anything. So um, I'm going to pass this out. This is what you guys are going to do today. You can work in groups of two or three, your choice. Just make sure you're working. Um, we're going to go around and take pictures. Oh, no, you're not in here. Um, keep in mind that uh, there's other classes going on, so we can go around. Be quiet. Uh, I'm going to be going around too, so um, if I see I can rip all the yell at you. But uh, there's your uh, tips for when you guys take the pictures today. Um, you're going to need to grab a tripod if you want a tripod. There's only two, so um, depending on if there's two or three groups, one of you will just have to find a flat surface to take a photo on. Um, if you're using the Canon, I think yes, you have it. I would not use the tripod. Um, we have that little uh, external trigger, so you won't need the tripod. You can just hit that button and it'll keep the camera still. They need the tripod so that it won't be moving. So, but I'll work with you later on that. Um, so keep the camera still. After you focus your camera, right, you hold the shutter halfway and that's going to focus. Make sure to take it off of automatic focus at that point and put it on manual. That way it's not trying to readjust it. Because if you're trying to take three photos and it even just barely auto focuses differently, it's going to make the photo weird. It's going to look like there's almost like ghosts or something in the picture, kind of blurry. So um, take it off of automatic focus at that point. Um, make sure that whatever you take a picture of today, and I'll go around and kind of give you guys tips. But uh, find something that has shadows, like a light source with shadows. So like highlights, low lights, and then uh, a mid-tone. And try to find something maybe with even color if you can. Uh, I know at the beginning, or at the front of the building, there's those ferns, and the, they're by the window, so the light's coming through. That could be a cool HDR photo. Or if you guys want to try the chapel, be my guest. It's really hard because it's so dark in there right now. Um, there's also a howl lamp in Miss McGinnis' office that you guys could try and do a picture of. Um, yes. But uh, we'll, we'll walk around and try and figure it out. So go ahead, grab your camera, so just put two tripods, and let's do it off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.